Okay, so one more field as we build our table in our access database. Let's put in the number of employees. Okay, so now we have our fields. And now let's take a look at the data types right here. Everything came in as text by default, but not all of these are text. For example, amount paid and current due are both currency. So I'll click right here, drop that down, change this one to currency, and I'll change this one to currency as well. And my number of employees is in fact a number because I can add them, subtract them, and calculate them. Now don't make the mistake of something like the zip code or the postal code being a number as well. Even though it's made up of numbers, it really is alphanumeric, it's text. Because you don't add your zip code and my zip code together and get a third zip code. So it will remain as text. Now I can go even further. A database is only as good as the information that's put into it. And you can make a great database, but if the people who are putting the data into the database aren't up to speed, then you can wind up with bad data. For example, I've worked in databases where it had a field for gender, and the choices are male and female, but you can accidentally type an N next to the M. And so all of a sudden, then you have errors in your database. So you have ways of locking down this information. Let's go take a look at some of these. So first, the, um, oh, I'm sorry, for the client number, for example, when I'm clicked in this field up here, look down here at the properties, and there's a lot of things that we can put down here. The first thing is the field size. 255 characters is the default, but in my, for this database, none of my clients have more than five digits in their, um, in their client ID, so I'll change that to five. Same for the client name. I don't want to default that to 255. Maybe let's say 50 characters will be sufficient. The street name, sometimes those can be long, but I'll go ahead and I'll give that one 50 characters. My city, most cities aren't more than 25 characters. Now as I'm doing this, the one of the reasons for doing this is because your database is going to reserve 255 spaces no matter what you actually put in the field. And while that's absolutely fine, it is going to make your database larger than it needs to be. So by changing these, you can, you can make your database smaller in size. Now let's look at this number over here. A long integer has choices as well. Now for the sake of this introduction, I'm not going to explain what all of these things mean, but a long integer saves numbers up to 32,000. And in the case of, my, of the number of employees for this small business that I'm working with, that's probably too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this an integer instead, which will make it a smaller, um, a, a smaller field size. Now there's other things you could do as well. For example, with state, most of my clients live in Oregon. And so to save myself some data entry time, I can come here to this field where it says default value, and I'll go ahead and I'll put in Oregon. That way it will come up as Oregon. It will be easily changed, but it'll save me that little bit of typing. I can do a little bit more. I can put in a validation rule. Let's say that all of my customers come from California, Oregon, and Washington. I don't have customers anywhere else. So I can actually type in here that I want them to either enter California or Oregon or Washington. And the quotes around these specify that this is the actual information that gets typed. Now, if I am going to put in a validation rule that you can't put anything in at all except for CA, OR, or WA, then I do need to tell the person who's doing the work what the options are. Otherwise, they can spin their wheels trying to put in things that don't exist and they won't be able to figure it out. So I'll actually say to them, must be California or Oregon or Washington. So if they try and enter something in that's not one of these three options, it will bring up this as a default. I can also make a field required right here. That means that you can't get out without putting something in those fields. So now let's go ahead and see how this works. I'm going to come up here to the data sheet view. It wants to know if I want to save the table, and I'll say yes. 
Now, it is going to say some data may be lost. The settings for the field size property of one or more fields has been changed to a shorter size. And that means that I already have some information in these fields and I'm changing the rules so there may be a couple that don't fit. I would have to go in and double check to make sure that it's not going to be a problem. For the information that I have, I know that none of the changes I made are going to affect it, so I'll go ahead here and I'll say yes. And for now I'll say yes to this message as well. And now let's come over here. So here is the data that I have already. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new entry right here. Notice that Oregon came in already. If I tried to change this to Colorado like the ones above it, here's that error message saying that this must be California or Oregon or Washington. So now I'll go ahead and I'll change that. To Oregon. Notice because I made these data types currency, all I have to do is type in the numbers and the dollar signs and the decimals will come up. Let's say this is going to be 14,000. All I have to do here is type in the digits and it will automatically format it the rest of the way. And there's a new record in my database.